In this video, we're going to introduce the idea of probability and look at some really basic probability questions. <clears throat> and so I'm just going to go through a couple definitions really quickly. I want you to know what these mean. Um, but probability is the numerical measure of the likelihood that an event will occur. Uh, that's a fancy way of saying, you know, we, we've all spoken in terms of probability. Oh, we've got a 50-50 chance. I've got a 73% a chance this happening. That's probability. And so a probability experiment would be the process of observing an outcome if you did not know the outcome prior to the experiment. The outcome, and we're going to use this word a lot, but it's the result of a probability experiment. We're going to see how many outcomes there are in a situation, how many possible things could happen. And then the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. The sample space for a coin flip would be heads and tails because that's all the, the possible things that could happen. And then your event is what we're describing in terms of the probability. It's any outcome or group of outcomes from a probability experiment. So one thing I want you to know is that we, we use probability and we define it as number of successes out of total outcomes. And so just to give a, a simple example that you'd be used to, we could say the probability of flipping a heads is one out of two because there's one way to flip a heads out of two possible outcomes. And then here I just want you to see the notation. If I'm saying the probability of event A, I would say P of A, like that with the A in parentheses. Almost kind of like function notation, um, but that, that's our notation. So I'm going to use that a lot, so be familiar with that notation. And then lastly, know that the probability of any event is going to be in between 0 and 1. Our probability is 0 if it's impossible for something to happen, and our probability is 1 if it's 100% or a certainty that will happen. But we can't have more than 100% probability. We can't have less than 0% probability. So our probability is always going to fall between 0 and 1, or in other words, in between 0% and 100%. Now, a couple is expecting their first child. What is the probability that it's a girl? I realize this is a, a very simple question, but let's go ahead and uh, use it to kind of... Uh, get our feet under us for, for some of these notations. But to do the probability of a girl, let's first look at our sample space. What are the, what are the total outcomes, okay? Our sample space, and actually if I back up a little further, the probability of a girl to find the probability, we're looking for number of successes out of total outcomes, okay? And so we gotta look at our sample space to find the total number of outcomes. We could have a boy, and we could have a girl. So that is our sample space. There are two possible outcomes. And then how many successes are there? Well, if we're talking about having a girl, there's only one outcome in our sample space where that would be a success. So our probability of having a girl is one out of two. Once again, I realize that you've, this is a simple example, but we, we need our legs under us before we can do the examples that come after this. Now, let's say a couple plans to have two children. What's the probability that they get a boy and a girl? Maybe they have the boy first and the girl second. Maybe they have the girl first and the boy second. But once again, I'm going to sound like a broken record. We need to look at um, number of successes or all the ways they can win. Maybe you can think of it that way. Out of total outcomes. And so let's look at our sample space. you got to think of all the different ways that you can have two children. And so you might have a boy and then another boy. You might have a boy and then a girl. You might have a girl and then a boy. And you might have a girl and then another girl. So it looks like that our total number of outcomes is four. These are the only four scenarios we can have in this situation. And so then our number of successes, for the number of successes, you would just look at, okay, how many of these have one of each? And it looks like boy and then girl and then girl and then boy. So it looks like there's two successes over four possible outcomes. That could simplify to one half, or if you wanted to write it as a decimal or a percent, you could do that. You can write your probabilities in fraction, decimal, or percent. They're all great. Now, let's heat it up a little bit. Let's say a couple plans to have three children. What's the probability that they get at least one girl? Now, here's, here's what's tough. So with this is why it's really important to, to understand the idea of sample space, because you might think, well, with three children, how many different ways could that work? Well, let's list them all out. And I've kind of got, already got this set. You could have girl, girl, girl. You could have boy, boy, girl. Boy, girl, girl. Yada, 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 right? And you see that. And so our number, or let's first talk about total outcomes. Our total outcomes looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in this situation, there's eight total outcomes. Let's look at our number of successes. The probability of at least one girl. Well, it looks like that would work. That would work because there's one girl there, there's two girls there. That would not, 
that would, that would, that would, and that would. In fact, it looks like there's only one outcome out of these eight that would not be considered a success. Um, I feel weird talking about having children as a success or a failure, but let's just use that vocab for now. Um, so in this situation, we have seven successes out of eight total outcomes. So our probability of having at least one girl would be seven eighths. Now, we're going to use that to pivot into this definition of the complement. And so the complement is the probability that an event will not occur. And so our notation for not A happening would be probability of A prime. You might see this A prime notation right here. And so one thing you need to know is, is you can represent the complement of A by doing 1 minus the probability of A. And let's think about this. Before we just kind of memorize this and run off with it, I think it, it can make sense for us. So let's say, um, let's say A is flipping heads on a coin flip. Well, then A prime would be not flipping heads, a.k.a. flipping tails. So if flipping heads has a 50% chance, 1 minus 0.5 would give you 0.5, the probability of tails. Basically, the probability of something happening plus the probability that not happening would equal 1. I really want us to, to understand this relationship here. And so this is a couple plans to have three children. What's the probability that they get at least one girl? Now, we can use our definition of complement to solve this problem from the last slide in a different way. So the probability of at least one girl could be just like this formula up here. The probability, or I could use this one, the probability of at least one girl could be one minus the probability of no girls. If you have at least one girl, the complement of that would be no girls. So what we can do to find this probability, you can just go one minus the probability of no girls. And as we saw in the last slide, the probability of no girls at all, the only way we had that was when we had boy, 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 and that was only one of our eight outcomes. So the probability of at least one girl can be found by doing one minus one eighth, or in other words, seven eighths. Now, I would encourage you to, to pause. We're going to start with kind of some, some easy examples, but go ahead and pause the video and try these on your own and, and see how you do, and then hit play when you're ready to talk about it. But given a typical two-sided coin, the probability of heads, well, well, in that case, we know there's one success out of two total outcomes. If you're given a six-sided dice, find the probability of rolling a five. Be careful here because you don't want to do five out of six. There's not five ways to roll a five. There's just one way to roll a five out of six possible outcomes. And then find the probability of, of rolling your dice and getting an even number. Well, if I think about my sample space, one, two, three, four, five, six, these are all the numbers you could roll. And it looks like there's three ways to roll an even number. So there's three successes out of six possible outcomes, or in other words, one half. <clears throat> Next, find the probability of obtaining a sum of six from rolling two dice. Now this one's a toughie. I would, I would definitely encourage you to pause it, see if you can chew through this problem, but it, it is not an easy one. And so I think the first thing that we can do here is, is we wanna list all of our possible outcomes, okay? And so I know that if my first dice roll is one, then the second dice roll could be a one, I could have one, two, so these, there's six outcomes if your first dice rolls a one, and there's six outcomes if your first dice rolls a two. And so you can see how many outcomes there are, and there's actually 36 total outcomes here. There's 36 different um, ways that you can roll two dice. And so in order to get our sum of six, we look at our number of successes out of total outcomes. So if I'm looking at this, we've already established our total outcomes is 36. The question is, how many successes are there? How many different ways are there to get a sum of six? And so I want to look through these and figure out, okay, how many of these combinations would add up to six? So let's see. I believe that's all of them. So five out of 36 would be your probability of rolling two dice and getting a sum of six. List out your outcomes identify your successes, and then write your fraction. Now, some of these, uh, actually let me go ahead and read the problem situation first. It says, you examine the elective courses chosen by the students in your grade, and you determine that there are 18 students in athletics, 26 students in fine arts, and six students in both athletics and fine arts, and four in, in neither. Um, and so with problems like this, it's really helpful to have a graphic organizer, like a Venn diagram to help us visualize it. And so, if I back up to it, it says six students chose both. Okay, so I'm going to put that would this, this region right here would represent the number of students that chose athletics and fine arts. 
It also says four chose neither, so I could do that, and I could even, um, a lot of times you'll see these with like a little rectangle around it, so I'll throw my rectangle around it. Now here's where you gotta be careful. It says that 18 students are in athletics. Well, it don't you don't wanna put 18 there because six of the students are also in fine arts, and they're accounted for right here. So if there's 18 in athletics, that means there's only 12 that are in only athletics, and then another six that are in both athletics and fine arts to get your 18 total. Okay. You also know that there's 26 students in fine arts, so that would mean that if the 26 includes this 6 right here, that there are 20 in only fine arts. Okay. Now that I, you may have not had to do this little Venn diagram, but it helps me visualize things on this sort of problem. And so let's find the probability that a randomly selected student is in athletics. Well, well we're looking at number of successes out of total outcomes. Well, the number of successes is 18. There are 18 students in athletics. It doesn't say only in athletics. It just says in athletics. So we, we want to include this 6 right here. And then we got to look at our total number of outcomes. And you got 12, 6, 20, and 4. This is, this is all of our outcomes for this problem. And I believe if you add those up, you would have 42. And so if I were to throw that in calculator, I could simplify that fraction. It looks like maybe a 3 would divide out of the numerator and denominator. And you could also take it to a decimal and you'd get... Um, 0.43 or roughly 43%. So there's a 43% chance that a randomly selected student in this grade is in athletics. And this is find the probability that a randomly selected student is in neither athletics or fine arts. Okay, so you look and these are all our students in athletics and fine arts and you got our four right here that chose to take neither. And so if we're just picking a student at random, there are four ways to get a success out of once again 42 possible outcomes. If I divided those out, that would be 2 over 21. It looks like a 2 divides out of both those if you wanted a simplified fraction. But you could also just throw that in your calculator, and that would be um, about, let's see, one, two, about 9.5%-ish. Okay? Um, but yeah, that's the basic idea of probability. Number of successes out of total outcomes. If you get that down, you'll be, you'll be um, in a good spot for the later lessons.